I want to talk about one of your guys definitely coming into this season. We're going to talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves, who are My now guy. sitting at, I think they're 7-2, and two, right? 7-2 and two yeah. on the season. Um, I think this is good enough for, for second in the Western Conference. Anthony Edwards is currently averaging 28.5 points a game, six rebounds, five assists. Um, he is on a tear really right now. Like from best. every aspect of the court, offense, clutch shot making, clutch defense, perimeter defense. He out here catching bodies in every single game. Like he is mm -hmm. doing it all. And I'll be the first person to say it. I said I thought that this whole Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns thing was going to really limit this Timberwolves season and how it was going to go. Anthony Edwards said, F all that. He don't nah. care about the fit. <laughs> he don't care about nothing. It, how much time on the clock? A minute? Give me the ball. Thanks. So he has been on an absolute tear. He did it again last night against the Golden State Warriors. I think Draymond said something to him like late in the third or fourth quarter that riled him up. And then it was just bucket after bucket after bucket. And the last one, he was yelling right back at Draymond. So he's got – we knew he had that that dog mentality about him, but he's showing it out on a night-in, night-out basis against the best competition that the league has to offer. They gave the Nuggets their first loss of the season. They also gave the Celtics their first mm -hmm. loss of the season. So the last two unbeaten teams, both were taken down by the Timberwolves, um, and both of them were tight – down to the wire to games. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what have you seen from Minnesota that has really impressed you, um, you know, this far early on in the season? The main thing is the defense, bro. Like, they be <laughs> strapping, bro. That's that Rudy. Like, bro, I'm telling nah, don't get me wrong. Like, I obviously, everyone knows us. If you've watched this, I'm not a Rudy Gobert fan. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the teams that he is on, like, the, def the defense is legit. You know what yep. I mean? Um, and I think the the main difference is the fact that, you know, they actually have perimeter defenders or perimeter defenders that can like, you know, it's not it's not like when Utah where it's like, all right, he just has to clean everything up. It's like, no, we're actually going to be able to guard on the perimeter. And then if you get mm -hmm. past him, then we have Rudy on the back end. So that's really been the biggest thing. But we kind of seen that going into the year. Like, all right, worst case, the defense is going to be there. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to be there because Ant elite, bro. He's I'm watching no. this guy. Like strap Tatum on one position and come back and get a bucket. I'm like, oh, my, this guy's the best. This is the best. If we're gonna have a conversation, when I say we, I mean like the NBA community as a whole, analysts, commentators, fans, whatever. If we're gonna sit up here and talk about the best two way players, that conversation can't happen without Anthony Edwards anymore. No chance. And, and it ha he has to be included because he is legitimately elite on both sides of the ball. Yes. He will guard the other team's best player. He literally said, I want to guard the other team's best player. He likes it when it's like, you guard me, I guard you, we're going at it. And right. he's going to do it at an elite level. But he yeah. had like five fouls in that Celtics game. And he's still being aggressive, still getting stopped, still doing like just being the same and old ant. What also is crazy to me is it's not even like he's being like, oh, he's an elite help defender. It's like, no, this, no. these are – I'm on an island. This is an isolation. I know what you want. I'm going to beat you to you, – you, I see what you're trying to do. Jason Tatum is trying to cross in his left. I'm I'm reaching into that pocket early. I'm making him uncomfortable. Like, mm. the intricacies that that entails, the athleticism, the confidence, like you said, to do that with five fouls to really trust your preparation and play that aggressively, like, elite, 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 elite. 100%, bro. And I love watch. It's so I love watching good defense. It's so fun to watch, but especially when it's star on star. That's the main thing that gets me because it's like a lot of times, like a lot of stars, it's just like, all right, cool. I'm going to do my thing on the offensive end. On the defense, I'll get their third best player. Like maybe, maybe later in the game, I might, you know, switch on to for a couple possessions, but like, nah, and it's like, bro, I, no, I'm guarding you. Like, we're going to go at it. I'm going to guard you. And then if I'm not guarding you, it's Jaden McDaniels guarding you. And then it's like, yeah. damn, I'm in prison. Like, it, it's, it's right. just tough, bro. They just got a lot of, like, length, pause, a lot of athleticism. Um, so that's the main thing that sticks out. I, I still feel like, though, Cat at times is still out of place. Um, he definitely is. It's, I just – I still feel like they'd benefit more if they – I mean, I can't really say move off him because I don't really know what his value is still. Like, I don't know what you really could get for him. Minimally, you think you got to be able to get like I'm talking at worst like two first round picks, bro. This is Carl Anthony Town. This is we're just talking about how out of place he looks. He doesn't look comfortable in the offense. Defense is like still a funky fit for him. 
He's still putting up 20 a night. That's true. I mean, he's still, how old is, like how old is for, Cat? He can't be that old. He got to be, what, 20? I know he's not. I'm gonna say, cause I know he's not young, but he's not old. So, right. I mean, he might be able to get a little bit something back, something back for him because I just feel like he's the – if I had to say one part of it that still has me like, Ugh, I don't know, it's really that. It's really the fact that, like, he still is kind of out of place. But like you said, they just said, bro, I don't care about the fit, bro. We're just going to go out there. We're going to hoop and then push come to shove. Like you said, late fourth quarter, give me the ball. I'm going to take us home because that's what mm-hmm. happens. Like they and they, they've had impressive ones. Like you said, beat the Nuggets, broke their or make, give them their first loss. Yep. Gave um, the Celtics their first loss Two really good teams. So no, nah, they're, they're legit, bro. They are definitely legit. And Ant is is here. We talked about it with the breakout players in the offseason. And is here, bro. All right. Combo who runs another NBA podcast, shout out to him. He tweeted earlier, he asked, who is the Timberwolves' best big? And I replied to him and I said, if we're talking specifically, like looking at this from the Timberwolves' perspective with this roster, with this team, like right now you have to say Rudy. Like Mm -hmm. the defensive impact, he's top three in the league in rebounds, which is what you're always expecting from him. Elite defense, elite rebounding. That is what you're getting at the highest levels. Like some of the best rim protection that – generationally we've ever seen uh, at the same time like we mentioned cat doesn't the puzzle piece doesn't seem to fit perfectly there right if we're talking purely in a vacuum just off of talent i feel like consensusly it might not be i mean i say consensus but a lot of people are going to just say cat because of the offensive talent is just so far beyond oh talent even, was, yeah. right even when he was the only center it wasn't like they were the it wasn't free. It wasn't like they were the worst defense right. ever. And we just talked about they have perimeter defenders, you know, around him and guys like Jaden McDaniels and Anthony Edwards. Now Mike Conley is still, you know, veteran can play defense point of attack. Like I think that in a vacuum, you take cap, but like, if you're looking at this team as a roster where it is right now, like you take Rudy and they're seven and two, despite that. And so it's like, do you think that they should try to go test the market, see what they can get for Carl Anthony Towns? Do you try to find a better fit there and maybe just recoup some draft capital that, you know, they lost um, yeah. and, and making the Rudy Gobert trade? Like, what is the best course of action? Because at the same time, you kind of run the risk of like, yeah, it looks funky, but at the end of the day, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Which is kind of how they got into this position in the first place by making the Rudy Gobert trade. I mean, yeah. The thing is, I do. I still feel like though, come playoff time, that problem is going to arise a little bit more. Like when you know, in the actual series, when people actually you know lock in and game plan against you and try to find your weaknesses, mm-hmm. I still feel like that's going to show up. So you could like be a little pro proactive and then move off from like obviously like this season before you get to that point. But I do agree, you do run the risk of like, bro, it's working right now. You don't you don't know if you really want to shake stuff up. Like you never honestly, you never truly know, bro. There's people like we even said like with the, the Harden trade before it happened, like, oh yeah, that, that's gonna be a good trade. You know, that's solid for the Clippers. Now look at it, like it looks terrible. So you never as much as you think you know fits and how things would work out, you never truly know until that person gets on the other team and you get the pieces back. But I I think it's a risk I'd be willing to look at because I just I feel like come playoff time, that problem is definitely gonna show up a little bit and then at that point, it's too late. You know what I mean? So it's it's something to consider. I'd say that. Yeah, because that, that's been like a, a hot topic of discussion around like NBA Twitter recently is if like a lot of people feel like he is if like the next star that's going to get moved. As mm-hmm. It feels like it's almost inevitable at this point in a lot of people's eyes that it's going to be cat. Um, and I don't know. Like, like you said, I don't know. I would be hesitant just because. We saw what happened when they felt like they made an unnecessary trade and getting Rudy Gobert yeah. that kind of put them in this position. And look, if they're in a spot right now where, like we just said, and it's like, it don't matter. He's just going to play above that. I don't know if I want to touch that right now. Like, it I, looks I, good. I, I definitely hear what you're saying. I think it's the only reason why I think it's a little bit different is because you're trading away someone rather than get, like trading for a big name, giving up mm-hmm. all these picks. But at the end of the day, yeah, I would have to see what the – return would be first so before like you know you make a, a judgment but completely understand what you're saying like you you never know it, they can make the trade and then the timberwolves could get significantly worse like you you really never know very true 